So somebody was asking about TSCO in the RDT chat, um, and I want to explain what is going on, because when you look at this, you go, damn, why is this thing so choppy? Right? So you see there's a lot of choppiness to it, even though it's super bullish. How do I know that this is going to continue or not going to continue? And you can think of the way that price moves like climbing a wall. And if it climbs too far up, you don't get enough footing on the rungs below. So even though a stock is really, really bullish, if it gets too bullish and too extended, it needs to find footing. It needs to come back and find something that it can continue to launch off of before that. And it's your job to find those. Um, and which ones are important contextually based on what the market is doing as well. So remember the market gapped up strong. TSCO had very strong earnings here too. So you take a look at the previous highest AV WAP, which would be right through here. And if you look at that intraday, it looked like right out the gate, right after earnings, TSCO just tested it quick and then ripped. So basically it was just making sure that there wasn't a lot of overhead supply and that bulls were essentially in control of the entire chart, by the way, it's an all time high. So that's the highest possible delineation point between people holding shares and people short shares. Confirm that and then rip, right? So next you wanna say, where's the channel on this thing? And you're gonna need a slightly lower time frame channel for this because you're just not gonna be in the trade long enough to care about a D1 channel. So there were a couple of lines, like you could have done this one through here after it confirmed it, like so. But the issue was the reason why it didn't after that bounce in the morning go right up to the top of that trend line from this previous channel was that you have this elevated relative volume here all the way up. So this candle is the highest relative volume. This one actually isn't as high. This one is the highest relative volume. So the high of that one proportionally it's probably gonna provide some sort of overhead resistance and if you put that right through there, it stopped this price action from ripping all the way and touching the top of the channel. But that's a pretty impressive extension too. So this thing is really bullish. Buyers really wanna buy this thing. So all you need to do is you need to make sure that you're not buying right at the point where they wanna find some rungs on the ladder. So then it kinda of moves sideways a little bit. And then at the open, because SPY gapped up, okay, there's gonna be more overall buying on this thing and we break through this H1 or this H plus trend line all the way up through here. And that's this long line through here. So I'll just delete these ones and I'll delete that one. So it breaks up super extended, really strong. That's so extended that the, the next rung on the ladder is down through here, 3% <laughs> below. Don't worry about that. That's my little, my little daughter right there. She's brand new. But the extension, it's gonna have to find some footing if it wants to continue up. Look at how crazy extended this is. Rule of thumb, this is the three EMA, three EMA on the D1. Uh, if you're past that, like if the low of that candle isn't touching the three EMA on the D1, be careful going long. That three EMA might change as the candle develops, but if you're above the three EMA, like the low of the candle isn't even touching it, be careful. And that's what we had to be with this one. So it went back, tested. This was the support here, this H1 trend line. This is a longer term, channel climax, like it's gonna be climaxing out of this channel and it might fall all the way back down to the lower border of the channel and it moves sideways a little bit before it continues. That's typically what happens to channels. Same with this one. So you have this channel breakout, it's breaking out, it's probably gonna extend a little further and then fall all the way back and then consolidate a little bit. Um, if it can't consolidate a little bit, if it can't fall back a little bit, then it's gonna compress and then you're gonna to continue to go up even further, but you gotta wait for that. EMA to come up through there. So if you're looking at all sorts of different tools, you don't just have to use AV webs. You don't have to use them at all. You don't just have to use high relative volume D1 candles. Like you don't just have to use this type of vision. You use it all. You use it all contextually on the multiple time frames. You look for the channels. You look to see what the price is doing. You look how extended it is in like comparison to what the market is doing. Uh, and you put that all into play to decide whether or not you want to trade this thing. Whether or not you're at a high probability moment where it's gonna continue up, or if you just got in right before it's gonna pull your face off. That's TSCO.